When boxing experts and fans tell you the most entertaining fighters throughout the history of the sport, there's always one name that you'll always hear in these conversations, Arturo Gatti. He was never considered the best fighter and he didn't always win, but throughout his entire career, in his highest highs and his lowest lows, he was always the people's champ. Arturo Gatti was born on April 15th, 1972 in Cassino, Italy. He got into boxing at a very young age and started participating in youth programs by age eight. When he was a teenager, he met his future manager, Pat Lynch, where he then decided to relocate and move to Jersey City, New Jersey. On June 10th, 1991, Gatti made his professional debut in Secaucus, New Jersey, taking on a man named Jose Gonzalez. He won his first fight by a third round TKO. 11 months later, he built up a record of six wins, zero losses, and zero draws, with five wins come by way of knockout. In his seventh bout, he experienced his first defeat, where he got stunned and lost a split decision to a journeyman with a record of six wins, one loss, and three draws. This is a small roadblock for the young Gotti, as he'd regain momentum by knocking out his next eight opponents and building up a solid win streak. All of these opponents, however, were what they were, opponents. They had close to no chance of winning, and it was time for a step-up fight. On June 28, 1994, Gotti fought his first fight scheduled for 12 rounds, taking on Alabama's Pete Taliaferro. Talia Farrow was nothing special, but he was by far Gaddy's best opponent on paper to date. The fight was for an extremely insignificant title called the USBA belt, but it was something new for Gaddy. He's never fought for any type of belt so far in his career, not even the insignificant ones, and he's already 16 and one. Gaddy made a statement. He obliterated Pete, dropping him three times and stopping him in the first round. Gaddy has passed his first test in flying colors. Gaddy continued his momentum, winning his next six fights before finally fighting for his first world title. On December 15, 1995, in Madison Square Garden, New York City, New York, Gaddy took on IBF super featherweight champion Tracy Harris Patterson. Patterson was extraordinarily experienced, with a record of 54 wins, 3 losses, and 1 draw with 39 KOs. Gaddy started the fight strong, winning round 1 on all 3 judges' scorecards, and setting the tempo early. He dropped Patterson briefly in round two. This knockdown was a huge factor throughout the fight and gave Gaddy a comfortable lead early. The fight throughout was competitive, but Gaddy was getting the better of it. Patterson was having some success in the middle rounds occasionally, but he was losing most of them. Heading into the later rounds, Gaddy was up big on all the judges' score totals. However, Patterson knew that he had a very strong chance of losing this fight and he had to dig deep and push himself late. He dominated rounds 10 through 12 and definitely tightened the fight up on the scorecards. This fight out of nowhere became somewhat competitive, and in boxing, anything could happen on the cards, especially when a contender is facing a champion. We go to the score totals. One judge has the fight 116 to 111. One judge has it 115 to 112, and the final judge has it 114 to 113. For your winner by unanimous decision victory, and the new IBF Super Featherweight World Champion, Arturo Gatti. Arturo is officially a world champion. Three months later, Arturo Gatti made his first title defense, returning to the garden and taking on 44 and eight Wilson Rodriguez, this was the fight that propelled Gaddy into an iconic warrior amongst fans, at least the first fight that really set the tempo for his career. Gaddy was landing shots early, but he was also getting hit, many times actually. He was getting outboxed and outclassed early. Gaddy's face looked bad, and he did come out strong in round two, hitting Rodriguez with bombs of his own, but he was definitely down on the cards early, and Rodriguez wasn't letting Gaddy get comfortable as he continued to trade with Arturo. In arguably Arturo Gatti's most iconic career moment, he showed the world how much heart he had. The doctor wanted to find out if Gatti could see out of his massively swollen left eye. He tells Gatti to cover that eye and tell him how many fingers he had up. Gatti covered his right eye and then momentarily moved his glove away so the doctor would not notice, did it quick enough so the doctor didn't notice, and says two fingers. The doctor okays Gatti and does not catch him peeking and allows him to continue. In round five, Gatti accidentally hit Rodriguez with a painful low blow, bad enough to where referee Wayne Kelly deducted one point from Gatti. Gatti undid his mistake where he hit Rodriguez with a devastating hook to the body, which was not low, and dropped him. He survived but showed he didn't have much left in this battle until Rodriguez pr proved all of us wrong once again and badly hurt Gatti before round five ended. This fight was an all-time classic. Gatti picked Rodriguez apart with jabs and body shots in round six, and after hurting Rodriguez to the body once more, Gatti landed a perfect hook that knocked Rodriguez out. Gatti was victorious and has put the boxing world on notice. 11 months later, Gatti had a rematch. No, not against Rodriguez, but against Patterson, the champion he'd previously beaten. He didn't make the same mistake he made last time, winning throughout the fight, but also finishing strong, and this time dominating the last three rounds. There was some dispute in this bout, as Gaddy was dropped in round one, but the ref, Rudy Battle, ruled it a slip. Then Patterson slipped in round nine, and the ref ruled it a knockdown. 
Nonetheless, it was a consensus opinion that Gaddy won the fight convincingly. With Gaddy on an impressive run, he took on young Angel Manfredi. Early in this fight, Gaddy gets cut by a punch from Manfredi and blood is dripping rapidly. The fight was back and forth throughout, but Manfredi was edging it narrowly throughout, being up on two of the three judges scorecards and the one judge who didn't have him up had the fight even, especially because in round three, he dropped Gaddy. After seven rounds of the fight being very competitive, Gaddy's cut looked worse and worse. As round eight is closing out, the cut looks atrocious and the doctor calls the fight off. The fight is stopped in the eighth and Gaddy has suffered his second professional defeat and his first significant defeat. Gaddy returned months later to lose a huge upset against Ivan Robinson in a very close decision. They had a rematch and Gaddy lost again. He got defeated twice by a virtually unknown Ivan Robinson. It's all going wrong for Gaddy. He needs to rebound and regain the momentum of his career. Gaddy quickly regains that momentum and goes 4-0 3 KOs in his next four fights before taking on the biggest name of his career, the golden boy of boxing, Oscar De La Hoya. Gaddy showed heart and gave it his best, but was outmatched and outclassed by the popular De La Hoya, getting stopped in the fifth round. In boxing, there's a famous expression that says that every dancer needs a dancing partner for a fight. And for Arturo Gaddy, for the first time in his career, he truly and genuinely found this. On May 18, 2002, Gaddy would take on Irish Mickey Ward. This fight would be known as one of the greatest fights in history, possibly the most entertaining sporting match event in modern history. It was 10 rounds of chaos, with both fighters landing a combined 618 shots. It was a fight that will never be forgotten in the sport, and Ward narrowly got the decision and the majority decision victory against Gaddy. Six months later, Gaddy and Ward would rematch, with Gaddy winning a wide decision on the judges' cards, outworking Ward once again, but more decisively. In their final about five months later, Gaddy would have the last laugh, once again outworking and outfighting Ward to a slightly closer but still clear unanimous decision victory. Arturo Gaddy is victorious in potentially the greatest trilogy in boxing history. The rest of Gaddy's career is filled with ups and downs, defeating an undefeated champion, getting battered in his only ever pay-per-view by one of the greatest fighters in recent history in Floyd Mayweather, beating another undefeated fighter who was 37-0, and and then getting stopped in his last two fights against guys that wouldn't have been able to stop a younger Gaddy. Gaddy retired for a record of 40 wins, 9 losses, but he also had 31 wins by knockout. He was 35 years old when he retired, and he was loved by nearly all fans in the sport. While being retired, Gaddy retired in Montreal, Canada to pursue real estate. On July 11, 2009, Gaddy, his wife, and 10-month-old son were scheduled to attend Gaddy's sister's wedding in Miami, Florida. That same day, tragedy ensued. A horrible thing has happened, and Arturo Gaddy has been found dead. Now, what I'm about to read is Wikipedia's words not mine. I reiterate, this is Wikipedia's words, not mine. This is all alleged, and I am simply doing is rereading what Wikipedia has stated. If anyone attempts to sue me, it would be better to go to the source of this information and sue Wikipedia than it is to sue me, as these are not my words, and I'm not going to claim to believe any of them. On July 11th, 2009, Gaddy was found dead in a hotel in Ibahuca, Pernambuco, Brazil where he was on holiday with, with his Brazilian wife, Amanda Rodriguez, and their 10-month-old son. He was 37 years old. Gaddy was to attend his sister's wedding the same day. Gaddy's widow was charged with first-degree murder after the Brazilian investigator concluded she char changed her story several times about how events transpired both the previous night and that morning. The investigator also concluded that it was impossible for Gaddy's body to have landed in the position where it was found under the kitchen counter after it fell from being hung from the side of a set of stairs. According to Gaddy's wife, a strap from her bag was used by Gaddy to hang himself, resulting in part of the strap being stained with blood. Rodriguez cannot explain how she spent more than 10 hours in a hotel room without realizing Gaddy was dead. Former boxing champion Acalino Freitas, who was a close friend of Gaddy, stated Gaddy and Rodriguez were having marital problems. Rodriguez had already filed for separation before their trip to Brazil, yet convinced her husband to go on the trip under the guise of last-ditch attempt to save the marriage. The Brazilian authorities initially ruled Gaddy's death a homicide, but after the coroner's autopsy, autopsy report was released, they declared it was a suicide and his widow was set free. On July 31st, 2009, it was announced that the Canadian government would be seeking more information from the Brazilian authorities on Gaddy's death. Gaddy's family confirmed that there would be a second autopsy done in Quebec. On August 1st, a pathologist hired by the ex-boxing uh, champ's family said Brazilian authorities overlooked bruises on Gaddy's body in the initial autopsy. In quotes, there were definite injuries that had not been seen by Brazilian authorities, end quote, Baden said. Almost a year later, in March 2010, the circumstances concerning Gaddy's death remained unclear. 
At the family's request, a Quebec coroner agreed to exhume the bodies so that two pathologists could conduct a second autopsy. Coroner Jean Brochu said, We've been waiting for this for a long time, and it's going to take a while before conclusions can be made and released to the public. A shortage of staff at the coroner's office was blamed for contributing to the delay of the investigation. Regarding a new toxicology report being prepared, Brochu quipped that it may, in quotes, take a century to get the results. The Quebec coroner's report was released in November 2011. Brochu agreed with prior conclusions that Gaddy died of violent death from aspyxia by neck constriction. I apologize if I've been butchering many words throughout this. He also noted that Gaddy had carisoprodol, carisoprodol, a muscle relaxant in his system, along with alcohol. An expert toxicologist from Quebec retained by the coroner said the drug can produce withdrawal symptoms, such as anxiety, confusion, and psychosis. The coroner also stated that obvious presence of post-mortem lividity indicated that the body had been suspended for some time before ending up on the floor. Two independent private investigators from the states hired by Gaddy's family proved it was impossible that Gaddy's body would have been found in the place and position it was if he indeed had hanged himself. They believed his wife had an accomplice to assist with murdering Gaddy. Motive was Gaddy's fortune, which Rodriguez inherited since he was able to coerce Gaddy to void their prenuptial agreement three weeks prior to his death. Rodriguez threatened to leave Gaddy and take their son with her, moving to Brazil if Gaddy did not write a will leaving his fortune to Rodriguez. After all the new findings, information, and facts were gathered and presented by independent outside agencies from Canada and the US, Brazilian authorities again concluded Gaddy's death was a suicide and closed the case. So there it is, the tragic and mysterious death of Arturo Gatti. What happened to Gatti was truly unfair. It's tragic that he fought his entire life and put himself through hell finally to enjoy retirement and life with his family, only for him to lose all of that freedom he earned within two years. He'll be remembered by fans as a fighter with a huge heart, a positive ambassador of the sport, and as a man who always gave it his best. What happened to Arturo Gatti on that fateful day?